Um, I think just more our age and stage of where we're at in our business. Like it's important at our ages now to set ourselves up for the future yeah. financially. So instead of, um, you know, previously we had some business coaching stuff, particularly in the hospitality space, whereas this for us was a bit more general and more focused on the wealth structure, which is, was kind of like the next step for where we were at. Yes, it makes a lot of sense. And look, for so many business owners, they sacrifice a lot to grow and scale their business. Uh, and then come mm -hmm. to the point in time where we've got to start taking those chips off the table. So I guess thinking back to that point in time, particularly around your finances, you guys have navigated COVID very well, uh, but what were your, your particular frustrations or concerns uh, around your finances at the time, if you don't mind sharing? Um... Before COVID, you mean, or? Yeah, or, or during the, when we first started working together, what were the kind of key financial frustrations that you were experiencing? Oh, just mainly managing the day-to-day -day cash flow, I guess, and just making sure we had enough cash in the bank to pay the bills. And ultimately, you know, with the goal of trying to um, build a war chest, which we kind of never really had. So that was, yeah, just being more proactive in that space and, um, you know, rather than scratching our tail and trying to find money to pay and, and pushing out the creditors and all that kind of stuff. Look, it's one of the most challenging things about running a hospitality business is just the peaks and troughs in terms of cash flow. So completely mm. understand. So we spent a lot of time trying to implement the, the cash flow structures, the, the, the profit mastery machine, uh, our, our bank balance accounting system. So what were some of the key takeouts and what have you seen valuable from, from that part of the process, Lisa? Um, the profit first model is probably a game changer when it comes to ensuring that there's money coming, you know, back to us each month as a priority rather than you know, reactive looking at the P&L and deciding what to pay us after the fact. Um, this kind of like always puts the money aside on a weekly basis. Um, so that's like, yeah, definitely the most valuable thing with it, I would say. Beautiful. And look, it's not an really easy process. It's quite a few moving apart. It does take a bit of both time and bandwidth to get it set up. So did you find yourself hitting any roadblocks when you were setting up that process? And if so, how did you and the team move through it? Um, it was a pretty easy process to set up in terms of, you know, the bank accounts and the structure and, um, you know, what goes where it took a little bit of time to get the percentages right, to tweak, um, those so that we had the right allocations. And sometimes we've had to make changes as well along the way, depending on kind of how the business is tracking. Um, and you know, off the back of the last couple of months that have been challenging particularly in one of the businesses we've, I am questioning, oh, have we got too much of a percentage now allocated to profit and do we need to put a bit more back to a um, couple of the other buckets? So I think it's just a consistent, you know, you just need to consistently be checking it and on top of it to make sure that you don't fall behind. Yes, it makes sense. And I guess the great thing about that now is because it is so transparent and clear, we can make those shifts and changes pretty, pretty easily and pretty yes. quickly, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys, testament to you, you've been very dynamic in terms of your approach of doing so, which is great. Yeah. So aside from the business profit and the business cash flow, um, let's talk about personal wealth. Obviously that's been a big priority for you, uh, making sure that we can navigate a lot of the complexities and make sure we've got clarity around the future. So if you look back on the work that we've done so far, what have been the biggest takeouts around the focus on, on personal wealth and financial literacy and education that's been most valuable for you, Lisa? Um, I'm still a work in progress in that space. Um, but the biggest thing I've got from it so far, I guess, is being clear on my spending and analyzing, I guess, my personal P&L more than ever and knowing what I'm spending and allocating, putting money aside for, you know, the bigger bills into, um, you know, the right accounts and just having that money kind of, yeah, budgeted pr correctly. 18 out of 40. This is the average score of a typical six or seven figure business owner when they complete our financial performance scorecard. This means that for the vast majority of people, they are below average financially. After all of the blood, sweat and tears that they've used to grow and scale their business, they aren't even optimized for the financial results to achieve the goals that they want. The financial performance scorecard covers ways for you to improve your profits, maximize your cash flow, cover your assets, build more personal wealth, and ultimately support the lifestyle that you got into business to create in the first place. Once you complete it, you're provided with a customized report with actionable insights of where you should be focusing your time and attention and how you can improve your score lightning fast in 2024 and beyond. So click the link below or in my bio and let's see how well you do.